This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to design this funnel infographic using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keyboard strokes I'm using. So with that being said, let's close out of this and get started. In Inkscape, let's go to view, make sure you have custom selected, and then we'll zoom in at one to one. And then we'll open up our line and distribute uh, menu with this button right here. Make sure you have last selected chosen from this drop down. And then we'll open up our edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button. So the first thing we'll do in Inkscape is create a square. So we'll come over to the create rectangles and squares tool and click on that. And over here on the canvas, let's hold down control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly symmetrical square, just like that. And then we'll go back to our select tool. Let's take the opacity and bring this down in half, about in half, doesn't have to be exactly in half. And then let's click on this a second time to get our rotation handles. The first time we click it, we're gonna get these scaling handles. We wanna click it a second time to get the rotation handles. And once you get that, hold down control on the keyboard and grab the, one of the corners and click and drag it around so that the corners are, pro, are facing perfectly up and down like that. And then we'll right click this and go to duplicate and we'll turn that duplicated copy right, uh, red and then we'll turn this back around to its upright position so just hold control and click and drag this around like that and then we'll hold control again and click and drag this up to about here and then click at another time to get our scaling handles again and then I'm gonna hold control I'm gonna hold control and grab this top arrow and just scale this up so that the width surpasses the width of this uh, diamond shape right here. So once you get it about that wide, I'm just gonna hold control and move this up a little bit so it's just beneath the corners of the box beneath it. Let me zoom in a little bit to show you. You want this to be just beneath here. You don't want it up here. You want it to be just beneath those corners right there. So I'm just gonna move that up a little bit uh, if you want to zoom in yourself, you could use the uh, the magnifying glass tool. You zoom in like that, and then you press 1 on your keyboard to get back out to 100%. And then I'll go back to the arrow, and with that selected, let's hold shift and click on the box beneath it so we have them both selected, and go to path uh, difference. And then I'm just going to grab this arrow and move this in a little bit. I'm going to click and drag this up here. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And then I'm going to hold control and click and drag this down and scale it down about that much. You want to get it at about this shape and this size and this position on your screen. And once you get to about here, come up here to this lock icon between the two number uh, inputs. And let's turn that on. And whatever the width is for you, let's copy that. Click and drag over those numbers to highlight them. And then press control and C on your keyboard to copy that. Whatever that value is. And then we'll go to our uh, ellipse tool. And we're going to create an ellipse going over the top of this here. Uh, I'm going to go back to the arrow, to the select tool. I'm going to make this a little, um, a little taller. And then we're going to make this ellipse the same width as that uh, triangle that we just copied. So come up here to the, the uh, width tool. Uh, let's highlight all of that, backspace and erase it. I'm just going to hold control and press V on the keyboard. Control and V and that'll paste it in and then hit enter and then it should make it the same width of that, as that triangle. And then I'll hold shift on the keyboard and click on that triangle and I'm just going to center that up on the vertical axis and then click off of it to deselect everything. Now I'm going to zoom in over this left side right here. I'm just going to, you can use the magnifying glass tool or, or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold control on the keyboard and roll up on the mouse wheel and I'm going to press down on the mouse wheel to pan the page around like this and I'm going to click on this oval. I'm going to hold control and just click and drag this up to about here. You want it positioned right about there. And then I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. Um, and then I'll right click this and go to duplicate. And I'll hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this down to here. And then I want to get those scaling handles. Hold control and shift. And I'm just going to scale this into about the size of this down here. And then I'm going to zoom in on that as well. Hold control, roll up on the mouse wheel. And then I'm going to hold Control and Shift, and I'm going to scale this thing down so it's just a hair larger than the triangle right there. 
maybe about that much. And I'm holding control and shift while doing this, not just control. If you don't hold both of them, it's gonna knock it off of its centered axis. So once you get it to about there, it should be the same position on the other side by default. And then we'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Then we'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on this top oval so we have them both selected. And go to extensions, uh, generate from path, and we'll choose interpolate. Now we wanna have exponent set at zero, interpolation steps three, interpolation method two, duplicate end paths checked, and these this one unchecked. And I'm just gonna turn on the preview to see how that looks. Okay, that's pretty good just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply, and then close out of that. And then I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna turn this green. And then what happened was it, it created all these new ovals uh, at you know equally distant sizes and proportions. So uh, they're grouped together like this by default. So the originals are still there. So in order to get rid of those originals, I'm gonna click on the green ones and then hold Alt and click on it again. And then it'll select the red one beneath it. And you'll know you'll have the red one selected when you see this red stripe down here in your toolbar. So once you have that selected, just press delete. We gotta click on, we gotta do the same thing down here. Click on the green ones and then hold Alt and click it again to get that red one. You'll see it in the toolbar. Press delete on the keyboard. And let's take this and let's right click this and go to duplicate these green ovals. And let's ungroup them. And then let's go to path, union. And then hold shift on the keyboard and click on that, uh, that black triangle. So you have them both selected and go to path difference. And then we can go to path break apart. And what that's going to do is if you click off of the graphic, it broke it up into all these different little pieces that we're going to use. So once you do that, click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And then let's click on this, um, these green ovals right here and let's ungroup them with this tool right here. Ungroup selected group, uh, selected objects and it's gonna ungroup them into separate pieces. And then let's take this second uh, oval right here. Let's right click that and go to duplicate and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the black piece above it and go to path union. And what that did is that made it, that gave it some shape. So that's what we're gonna do to the rest of these. We're gonna click on this green one, right click that, go to duplicate, hold shift in the keyboard and click on the black piece above it, go to path Union. We'll do the same thing with this one down here. Right click, duplicate, hold shift, click on the black piece above it, path, union. And finally, we'll take this one, right click, duplicate, hold shift, click on the black piece above it, and go to path, union. So what we could do now is let's, let's click and drag over this whole thing, and let's bring the opacity all the way up and then click off of it to deselect. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click this top green um, object up here, and then I'm gonna hold shift and click the black one beneath it. And I'm gonna raise that to the top with this button right here. Raise, select, raise selection to the top, and then I'm gonna hold control and click and drag this up about this much. So we're putting about that much space between them. And with those still selected, I'm gonna hold shift and click on that next green piece beneath it, and then click on the uh, while still holding shift, click on the black piece beneath it. And let's raise all of that to the top. And then hold control and click and drag this up a little bit to about there. And we'll do this again. Hold shift, click on that green object. Oops. Click on the green object. And then while still holding shift, click on the black object. Raise that to the top. And hold control and click and drag this up. Hold shift, click on the green object. And then the black one, raise that to the top, and then hold control and click and drag this up about that much. So we now have all of our pieces set. We just have to color them in now. So I'm gonna click off of that to deselect everything. And let's click on this black object and then this green one. Hold shift and click them both so we have them both selected. And the colors I'm gonna use here are blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. So I'll start with blue up top. I'm going to pick a shade of blue down here. Maybe I'll go with that shade. And then I'll click on this green object down here, then hold shift and click on the object beneath it so we have them both selected. 
and go with a, uh, a shade of uh, green, maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. And then I'll click on this object, then hold shift and click on the object beneath it. And I think I said yellow for that one. Yellow. And click on that one, hold shift, click on the one beneath it. And I'm gonna make that orange. I'm just gonna go to this shade of yellow right here. And then I'm gonna come up here to the fill tab under the HSL tab. I'm gonna take this H column and slide it over a little bit. I like that shade of orange right there. That's pretty good. And then finally, we could take this green one down here, hold shift, click on the one beneath it, and let's make them red. And what we could do now is we can click off of that to deselect it. And let's click on just the top piece up here, this top oval. And let's go to the fill tab. And under the HSL tab, there should be the L column right here. I'm just going to slide this over to the left a little bit to darken that up. Maybe about that much. And I'll do the same thing to this top oval over here. Slide that over to darken that up. Same thing down here. Darken that up. Click on that. Let's darken that up. And I'll click on this one, finally, and darken that up as well. So we're, we have our funnel pretty much set. One last step. I'm going to take the Bezier pen. I'm going to start out up here in this oval to the, to the left over here. And I'm going to click and I'm going to bring this line down here. And then click again and then bring the line back up here. Maybe about this far apart. Click and then click back to the starting point once it highlights red and connect it all together into one shape. Now let's turn that white and let's go over to the stroke paint tab and let's click the X button to turn that off. And we'll go to the Fill tab, and then we can click on our Select tool. I'm going to click on this blue piece right here, and then I'm going to hold Shift and click on this green one, and then this yellow one. I'm holding Shift the whole time, the, the orange one and the red one, so we have all those main segments selected. I'm going to right-click that, go to Duplicate, and go to Path, Union, and then hold Shift in the keyboard and click on that white object we just drew. So we have them both selected and go to path intersection. And then I'm going to take the opacity. I'm going to bring that down a little bit, maybe about that much. So we now have our funnel set. What I'm going to do is click and drag over the whole thing and group it together with this button up here, group selected objects. So that's now all grouped together into one object. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the tabs for each segment of this funnel. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the rectangles, uh, create rectangles and squares tool. I'm just going to click and drag and create a rectangle going over this thing. And it's going to be white because that's the color we most recently used. Let's just change that to black for now so we can see it. Then I'll go back to the uh, select tool and hold shift, click on the funnel. And let's just center that up on the vertical axis and then click off of it to deselect. And for the height of this rectangle, you want to make sure you have the height up to here on the blue, on the blue one. And then down here, it's just a little lower than the tip of the, uh, the red one down there. So what I will do now is I'm going to create another rectangle. I'm going to click on the Rectangles tool. And I'm going to start this one out here to the left. I'm just going to create a small rectangle about the same height as the gap between all of these uh, pieces here. So once you do that, let's go to the arrow, the Select tool. I'm going to press down on the mouse wheel to pan the page over. I'm just going to make sure the width of this is going over the rectangle beneath it. And then I'll hold control and just click and drag this down to about here. So it's going between those two objects right there. And then I'll right click that, duplicate, hold control, click and drag this one down to there. Right click, duplicate, hold control, click and drag this down to there. Right click. Duplicate one more time, and then hold control and bring this down to here. And then I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard and click on all of those little rectangles we just created. I'm going to come over to the, uh, the distribute panel and select this button that says make vertical gaps between objects equal. So that's going to space them all out equally. And then we can go to path union to unify them together. And then I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on this rectangle that we created, the bigger one, and go to path 
difference. So what I'll do now is, now that we have individual panels for each segment, let's go back to the Bezier pen and click on that. And let's start this shape above this rectangle, but on the left side of that uh, blue oval right there, right about up here. And then click, and then bring this line down to about here. You want it to be taking about the same angle as the funnel is. It's not going to be exact because we, we changed the shape of it by moving the segments further apart, but somewhere like that, that's pretty good. That's good enough. We can go back to our select tool and let's convert that from a stroke to a path. So let's go to path, stroke to path, and then hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this off to the left, maybe about this much. And then I'll right click this and go to duplicate and I'll hold control and drag this copy all the way over here to the left, not quite going to the edge there to the corner or past the corner. You don't want that. You want it right before the corner, maybe like that. And then with that still selected, hold shift and click on this one as well. And let's right click that and go to duplicate. And let's come up here to where it says flip selected objects horizontally. We can click on that and then hold control and click and drag these duplicated copies over here to about the same position. You could press down on the mouse wheel to pan the page around and they could be, there should be scroll bars here on the page where you can move the page around just like that. And I'm going to click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now I'm going to select just these two lines right here. I'm going to click this one and then hold shift and click on this one. And I'm going to unify them together by going to path union. And then I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on the, um, the bigger rectangles we have in the background there. And with them both selected, let's center that up on the vertical axis and then go to path difference. And then I'll click this line. Hold shift, click on this line so we have them both selected. Let's go to path union and then hold shift and click on the rectangles beneath it so we have them both selected. Center that up on the vertical axis and go to path difference. And then we can go to, with that still selected, we can go to path break apart. And it's going to break that up into a whole bunch of little individual pieces. And we can click off of the graphic to deselect it. And we can go and click on each one of these individual pieces and just delete them. So I'm just clicking on them and pressing delete on the keyboard. Alternatively, you could right click and go to delete. I think it's easier to just use the keyboard. I'm gonna come over here and delete these pieces as well. Just clicking on them and pressing delete. That's pretty good. And then let's click on this one right up here and then hold shift and click on this one so we have them both selected. Let's bring the opacity up. Let's go to our dropper tool, which is down here, the dropper tool. If you don't see this on your screen, just press F7 on the keyboard and you'll get the dropper. And with those two selected, let's make this the same shade of blue that that is. Then we can go back to our select tool, click on this one, hold shift, click on that one, bring the opacity up. Let's go to our dropper tool and make that the same shade as green. Let's go back to our uh, select tool, click on this one, hold shift, click on that one. Bring the opacity up. Let's go to our dropper tool. Make that the same shade. And we'll do this for the rest of these objects as well. Let's go to the dropper tool, make it that shade. And then finally, we can click that one, hold shift, click on that. Bring the opacity up, go to the dropper tool and click on that to make that the same shade. And we now have labels that we can use for this infographic. So at this point, the tutorial is complete. I hope this has been some kind of help to you. Um, and hopefully you can use this in some way. So as always, thank you for watching and take care.